Okay, so I just want to talk about um, scuppers here just for a minute or two. So you can see that these two I built in, like when I ran this right angle 292 along the deck of the boat to establish the line that I built up this fairing on, which I'll call the fairing or gunwale or whatever. Okay, I, I cut the right angle out first and then just ran this sheet right over top. So it was a nice straight line. But then this, this fairing's fairly straight too, but the problem is here, there's a scupper in here, but, the, but this fairing curves, it compounds. It curves in and rolls over. And if you try to cut that in ahead of time, you're never gonna get it straight. Like it's gonna either be too, it's, it's gonna pull away, it's gonna deflect, right? So it's best to just build the whole piece in and then come in and just draft it on with a pencil. And in this case, I just drilled a hole on each end which I can hone out a bit more with the file. And then I can come in here like this with a knife and just gently, I like to use a piece of tape along the line, just gives me a little insurance to stay on the inside of it. And then you can just come in and just cut that piece right out of there like that, see? And then you can clean it up That's the beauty of the joint as well when you're using evergreen. Um, you know, you can cut the joint apart and it comes apart fairly reliably too, right? Okay, so then I can come in there and I can just clean this up with a file. Like that. Okay. Okay, so this is a, probably a good point to just talk about decisions, decisions when it comes to details. So it's going to be different for each personal model as it pertains to each individual. Like how far do you go? I mean, there's little uh, brackets on here with chain that, uh, you know, chain hangers for this retread that goes on the back like this. That I could see doing, because I've done that on one three fifty scale for larger subjects. So, that, so that's not a problem. A little bit of chain there wouldn't hurt. It's easy enough to do. Um, now this hangs on the back like that, and that pretty much finishes up the rear transom. Well, there's other details too, I shouldn't. I mean, there's the bollards that pop up. They're just round discs on here. I'll probably put those on. But I just want to talk about these for a second. So these are these, see those? There are these two returns there. It's like a little shelf, a curved shelf 
Why these are here, I do not know. They're not scuppers, because the water, because the deck's right here. They wouldn't put a scupper up here. It, would, it wouldn't make sense. I don't know what they are, to be honest. Um, no idea. So, I've cut these small little plates out, curved plates, that I'm going to glue in place, like that. I'm not really sure if I'm going to cut those out. I might just leave these because a lot of times there's be so much detail going on. You don't really notice after a while anyway. However, I could still apply these. I'll leave them for a bit. And then if I want to, I can load up a brand new number 11 point tip, sharper than this even. And I could just use this as a template and cut that out. This would stabilize this compound curve. The only problem that I'm worried about is if I cut that slot out, is it going to pop? Like, is some of this compound mass uh, going to pop? And then this could get ugly really fast, okay, at this scale. Is the detail worth it? So, see, the, the modeler has to make a decision. Because if you look inside of there, It starts on this former right here and then ends on that former there and there's one buried underneath there. One other former. So I don't really know. Um, but when I have moments like this, uh, what I do is I just pause on them and I move to another area and then take it as far as I can go and then just leave it. So we'll see. Okay, but if I'm not in the mood to do this to cut this out right now and I really don't want to, then I'm just going to Tack this down, I'm going to glue that down, and then just leave it, okay? Okay, so getting down to the some of the final details on the transom here. So you can see this tire retread bumper piece that I built. Uh, this was fun to do as well. I'll just quickly summarize. So it was cut out on a piece of uh, 20 thou scrap and I cut the tread in and then I backed it with a piece of 10 thou, put lots of glue on to just soften it all. This inside just came out that way, which I think is kind of cool, even though I won't see it. But what this 10 thou backing sheet does is it fills in some of this tread so it doesn't go all the way through so it has a bit of a back and so sort of a layered kind of approach and I quite like it actually um, and when you do that you know more things happen like it just gives you a little more material to work with you can shape and bend because I want this tire to look like it's a heavy you know there's a little bit of a deflection in it and you know some curvature See, and then I backed it here with, I took some four by four, HO four by four strip and I packed, ran a piece all the way along just to kind of hold the curve a bit. And then I packed in a couple scrap pieces just so it sits on the rear transom below this plate here. And then I introduced more wear and tear from cables like in the center area where most of it would be. And it's really cool, isn't it? Right, like that. The more detail you build in like this, the more opportunities and fun you're going to have when you go to paint and weather it. Because you're going to be able to work all this, you know, rubber, steel, you know, rust, things like that. Okay. And just to close on this, if I want, I can add a couple of brackets here with some chain detail just hanging down. Just to support this it sort of hangs on the back here by chain so i imagine you know it's not bolted to the actual transom it's it's quite heavy and just hangs on some chain with some bracketing or some plate probably in behind here okay okay so uh, i just wanted to show how I lay up the bollards here on the front of the bow and you can see I, I built up this uh, 
This is the chain uh, winch, sort of on a spool, and this is sort of a windlass. It's a dual purpose, I believe, for hauling in the, the anchor and for running a rope around as well. Uh, there isn't a lot of photos of it, like most of them are, you just see the top of it there, see? Um, although there's, there, there's a few, like that one there shows it pretty good. You can sort of see it. Uh, it's got a wider base and a cylinder on top. So I just built that up today with a bunch of tube, just telescoping and wrapped, uh, uh, did a few wraps. I find with evergreen, if it, if your pieces are like, um, like some of the pieces would be loose like this, like this is one sixteenth rod into one eighth tube. Um, that's okay. You can glue that and still get good results. Uh, I find with the larger diameter, if you just, um, take some like really thin, like five thou, just cut a strip and then just wrap it, glue it and wrap it like around the, the rod or the tube. I just give it one wrap and then sand it after and it'll slide in nice and tight like a shim. So, so uh, what I've done is, is I basically just drilled a, a 1 16th hole and I'm putting a rod in first. See, there's two holes there and one there. Uh, that way um, I can line the bollards up because you can't depend on getting the pins exactly right uh, if there's no tolerance to move them around. I like to uh, line them up by eye, a good old eye test, you know, later. And then those I'll cut off, like I'll leave them proud and then I'll cut them all off so that they have a waterline level and they're not the same angle as the shear on the bow because there is a bit of a shear and a camber on this deck. So that's what I do. And, um, you know, I basically just take the rod, and slide it in. And nip it off. And then I'll, I'll just slip these over top, like glue them up real good. And then this winch or uh, the uh, Sorry, the uh, anchor winch, I guess, is what it is, is offset a little bit on the bow. It's not uh, centered. It's actually more to uh, starboard, uh, off-center. Why that is, I'm not really sure. But And then I believe there's a... I don't have a good reference but I think there's a hole that goes down to the chain locker like in here so there might be a guard cover for uh, to cover the house pipe there like chain because I know that that would be a, a a safety issue if it ever grabbed the rope or anything on the deck and you know it could take limbs off I'm sure on larger warships it, it claimed sailors lives I believe especially during the second world war with chain running off the deck the way it does um, down through the house pipe. If it grabs anything, it's going with it, right? Down the toilet kind of thing. So that uh, I won't worry about right now. It's probably got a round cover, like a sheet steel metal cover or something over it. But that's how that'll go. And that'll kind of finish up a lot of the sort of um, mooring hardware, uh, etc on the boat, uh, on the main deck, etc. Okay. Okay, so how's everybody doing? So I want to talk about a way to do anchors. And you can see I built this anchor here to scratch up. Actually, this only took about an hour or something or 45 minutes. It didn't take long at all. I'm going to show you how to make an anchor, but I'm going to make a larger one because it, it films better. But uh, you can see where this anchor, it has an extra long shank on it. And it goes up through the house pipe like that. They always look so much better, uh, anchors. Well, everything does when you scratch build it. Like the, everything looks sharper. See where it comes up through the house pipe there. Okay. So I'm going to show you how simple it is to build an anchor, any kind of anchor really, out of plastic. For starters, you can get a, a drawing 
I got this in 60 seconds off of Google Images. Boat anchors. Google Images up top, right? Hit Images, and this came up. So I'll show you how to make this. So you just cut this out, right? Square, okay? Just like this. Whatever the size is that you want, you can just draw it onto the plastic anyway. And it also helps to have a photo or two of an anchor, just, just so you can see 3D what's going on, right? So I'm just going to cut this at a flat plate. This bottom's going to be flat plate. Here's some scrap here and just a, a square piece of plastic. Crush the end with pliers. These rings can be made from rod. I've made them before. But I'll show you basically how to make an anchor. And you don't have to cut everything exact. So I just tape that on like that. Just, just trace it with a pencil. Don't worry about the line, how, how precise it is. You can clean that up with a file later. You can bring the profile down a little bit. You clean it all up with the file after it's built, okay? So what I do is I just scribe that. This is, in this case, 20 thou, but this little one was 15 thou. And for the little anchor for the tug, I used 15 thou sheet, 9015. And then I use this Plastruck 90849, which is really small, a round rod. And you wonder what you use this for. Well, you'll see. I use it for right here. See the details on the anchor? This little reinforcement bosses on the blades and stuff. Like that's what you use that for to dress up things. Then you got the 40 by 60 for the shank. This is for the small one now, but I'm going to build it larger. So you just up all your profiles. Half round and some other 20 thou rod. Oh, you'll need some quarter round as well, but I'll show you. Okay, so I'm gonna have so I'm gonna build this anchor a little bit larger, and here's all the all the materials. Some quarter round, half round, square stock with a little notch cut in it, easy. Took two seconds to do that. And some 40 thou for little angle scrap pieces. I'll show you how it goes together. So you scribe this out like this, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's your blade or your fluke, okay? So this is the bottom. I don't know what this is. It's, it's, it's the base plate, I guess, right? And like I say, you can just cut this square and then file in uh, the shapes later if you want, right? Okay. So what I do is, is I just take this first like this, put a little bead of glue, and then I sit this fluke on top. Excuse my hands for a second. Okay, I'm just gonna throw this together quick. I'm not gonna get particular if it's not totally square because I just wanna show you how easy it is to build. Okay. Okay, so now I have that, right? Okay, so now once I have that piece done, then I'm going to take the shank, slather some glue on that. And I'm just going to slide this on like that. Okay. See how it's starting to take shape and it's all just flat plates, right? Like, like traced from the paper, right? You can do these more 3D pieces by adding and, and using a file if you want, but you really don't have to. There's 101 anchors out there, right? Okay, so now that that's done, I actually can put that on later if I want. But I'm gonna take this quarter round I'm going to put a bead of glue in the corner there. I'm going to take a piece of this quarter round. And I'm going to drop it in. Like that. Just 
just hope that the solvent sets quicker than normal, right? Okay, so I'll take this piece, drop that in like that. And I like to take some uh, cement, just flood the thing, because it helps coagulate the plastic, like all the corners and everything, makes them all sit tight and nice, and mushrooms the weld nice. Really fuses the plastic together nicely when you do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. When all this is dry, I'll just nibble all that off. Okay. So now. I take these little 45 pieces, which I nibbled off a bit because of the quarter round. Take my glue, put a little flood in there. Lay this piece in like that. Take another one. Flood this corner. Just stick that little gusset in there like that, see? Okay. So when this all sets, so I'm just going to flood that with some cement just so I get a good weld. So when this all sets, you can clean all this up with a file. Okay. I'll do the other side like that. But in this case, I'll leave it for now. So I take this half round, put a good bead on the bottom. Don't be afraid to flood cement into it. Might as well do the other side here, right? Flood a bit of cement into that corner right there. Drop in that little gusset. And then we've got one more gusset here. A good old number 11 blade. Modeler's best friend, right? Especially for small parts. You don't want to be f trying to get your fat fingers in there. So that went together pretty quick, right? And you can see that. Let that set. And then when you get to the end, you take a pair of pliers like this and you squeeze, you crush that plastic down like that, right? And then you take a drill, you drill your hole and you file off the end. And then when that all sets, you trim all that up and clean it up with the file and there's your anchor, okay? in under 10 minutes.